Good morning. Again, today we are here uh, to learn chemistry. I'm Stephen Aira Juma, a teacher of maths and chemistry. But today we want to learn chemistry and most specifically the topic sulfur and its compound. And the subtopic will just be about sulfur and its extraction. So to begin with, uh, maybe we revisit what we know about sulfur. That is what we learned in Form 2. Sulfur and its compound is a Form 3 topic. But in Form 2, you learned about the periodic table. So there are issues you can discuss about sulfur. Just to begin with, Sulfur is a non-metallic element. Is a non-metallic element. Non-metallic element. Number two, it is the second second element in the periodic table in group 6 uh, just below oxygen the other important thing to know about sulfur is that uh, it has atomic number sixteen and therefore has electron configuration of two to eight to six. It is a solid at room temperature. It is a solid at room temperature. And has a melting point. of about a melting point of about 113 degrees Celsius. The next question we should be asking ourselves is if sulfur is an element, how does it exist? How does it occur? Is it found naturally? Is it made? Is it prepared? Is it manufactured? The answer would be all that I've talked about existing naturally, being prepared, all could be true, we'll see as we discuss through this topic. But most importantly, the occurrence, hey. the existence of sulfur. How does sulfur exist? How does sulfur exist? Now, number one, sulfur exists, occurs, 
Guru. Dum, 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 dum. As an Uski. an combined an combined element. I below the earth crust. Two. Just about two hundred meters below the ground. Uh, this kind of sulfur, uh, for those of you who are interested in history, uh, mainly found, is mainly found, mainly found in USA. USA. Uh, that is in Texas and uh, also sometimes in Louisiana but also in Italy in Italy found in Sicily that is how it exists existing and where it exists it exists as a combined element that is sulfur solid yellow powder uh, one, you're seeing it is two, found beneath two, the two, earth's one, two, two, two. just about 200 meters below the ground two, two, one, two, two, one. apart from it existing as a combined form sulfur also exists in combined 10, form. 11, 12, 13 Sulfur also exists in combined form. Ten years ago, ten years ago, as one, two, either one, two, three, sulfides. That's all I want. As either sulfide or which include which include which include the iron pyrites iron pyrites one that is F E S two and yes copper pyrites that is mainly C U F E S two. But most especially, sulfur also exists as sulfate in sulfate form. And one of the sulfates we have is gypsum. Uh, that is calcium sulfate. The two H two O, and actually that is how sulfur exists. Uh, but most especially today, we want to discuss how sulfur is extracted, and the sulfur we're going to talk about that is extracted is the uncombined form of sulfur, and. Uh, now, here, extraction of sulfur.
Now, the extraction of sulfur I'm talking about here is not getting it from the ores, that is the sulfides and, or the sulfates, but actually getting the uncombined sulfur that exists underground in combined form, in uncombined form, sorry. Now, the process of extracting sulfur from underground was discovered by uh, a German-born American, uh, that is Hamann. So the sulfur is extracted from underground by a process that was discovered by a uh, German-born American scientist, that is uh, Hamann Frasch which led to the process being named after him. And we're seeing the process of extraction. Process of extraction. Uh, is actually known as Frasch process. And like I said, the Frasch process was named after this American-born, Germany-born American, who is a Hermann Frasch. So this process entails uh, using uh, the raw materials here I want to talk about. Uh, just two, mainly, and that is super heated water super heated water uh, at temperatures of about 100 degrees 170 degrees Celsius uh, this is under pressure under pressure maintained in liquid state under pressure uh, the other raw material for this process is uh, hot compressed air, hot compressed air, hot compressed air, uh, uh, compressed uh, at about 15, uh, using 15 atmospheres of pressure. Its temperature is also just about 170 degrees Celsius. Now, in the extraction process, the two raw materials I'm talking about, the superheated water and the hot compressed air, are the ones that are fed into the fresh pumps. Now, the fresh pumps are made of uh, three concentric pipes. And uh, as we can see, the first pipe is the middle one the thinner one, the inner one. Uh, we have the second pipe that is somewhere here. Then we have the third one. They are actually circular concentric pipes. Uh, the drawing here is actually uh, longitudinal. So we are only seeing a cut section of it. Otherwise they are circular tubes or pipes. So the superheated water enters through the outermost pipe, concentric pipe, and you can see with the arrows how it flows. It flows up to the point. Uh, this is the ground level here indicated. Uh, these are the sulfur deposits. So we have here sulfur deposits or sometimes you can call it sulfur beds. Sulfur bed. So the superheated water enters through this point. The purpose is mainly to melt the sulfur. After melting the sulfur, the molten sulfur leaves that point through this, flowing in here. Then, hot compressed air 
through the middle concentric pipe forces out the mixture as you can see here air comes then forces this mixture this is a mixture of molten sulfur and the superheated water which again leaves and you can see it leaves through the middle concentric pipe to a point here where it is collected and we have indicated here molten sulfur and water the water we're talking about is the water that was used as a raw material the one that was used to melt the sulfur deposit the movement of the sulfur the movement of the sulfur, molten sulfur and water is indicated by uh, the blue arrows so it flows out that way so we are seeing their movements the arrows show the movements of the raw materials and the products of this process so we're seeing superheated water comes through the outermost in through the outermost concentric pipe goes melts the sulfur deposits after melting the sulfur deposits they leave through this opening hot compressed air pumped into the middle concentric pipe which pushes the mixture of molten water molten sulfur and water out and is collected so just to put something down we would start by saying uh, what is superheated water what is super superheated water what is superheated water What is superheated water? Now, superheated water uh, is water is water heated above its boiling point. Its boiling point. But st still is in liquid state. Still is in liquid state. And this is only possible uh, if the water is subjected to high pressures. And as you can see, the pressure of this, under these pumps, or under these apparatus, is too high, about 15 atmospheres of pressure. That is what causes that is what causes the water to remain in liquid state. Now, what happens is that we are saying superheated water is used uh, most specifically specifically to melt the sulfur deposits to melt the sulfur deposits the sulfur deposits so it is fed it is fed into the fresh palm through the outermost concentric pipe
as indicated. As indicated. As indicated. After which we say that the hot compressed air air is pumped is pumped through the innermost innermost concentric pipe concentric pipe as shown in order to in order to and there I would wish to give two purposes two purposes the two purposes two purposes of the hot compressed air so it is fed into the pub in order to one as had I had said earlier so the first function of the hot compressed air is to is to hot compressed air compressed air forces you can see pushes the mixture of molten sulfur and water through the middle concentric pipe uh, number two due to the high pressure it has helps it helps it helps maintain the water in liquid state the water in liquid state help maintains the water help maintain the water in liquid state uh, the sulfur mixed with molten water as we have indicated leads through the middle concentric pipe and uh, collected as you've shown on the ground that is as you can see here i've indicated the blue color uh, it is possible to collect sulfur together with metal to, together with sorry together with water uh, simply because one Sulfur 
can be separated. Sorry, just separated, collected, can be collected, can be collected and separated and separated and separated from water because of its low melting point of 113 degrees Celsius that is below the temperature of water and for the fact that it is insoluble it is insoluble for the fact that it is insoluble in water for the fact that it is insoluble in water so we started by saying just to recap on water I've talked about that sulfur is a non-metallic element existing naturally uh, in uncombined form that is uh, underground about 200 meters below the surface and uh, we say it is found mainly in USA that is in Texas and Louisiana and in Italy we say it is found in Sicily uh, most specifically, uh, it also exists uh, in terms of combined form that is combined with other elements. And uh, I talked about ores, and those are the pyrites. Uh, iron pyrites, copper pyrites. And also existing in sulfate form, and I gave an example of gypsum as the combined form of sulfur. Then I said to obtain sulfur, uh, the most employed uh, process of obtaining sulfur is extraction of sulfur by a process that was invest invented uh, by a German born American scientist, and uh, we say that is Hermann Frasch which even led to uh, the name of the extraction process as fresh process. And we're saying the fresh process entails digging and putting fresh pumps, that is the concentric pipes, and I've said there are three of them, uh, as I've shown on the diagram. And I've said uh, of the three concentric pipes, Two are meant to feed in some raw materials. One of the raw materials I've said is superheated water, which is about 170 degrees Celsius in terms of temperature. And a hot compressed air compressed at, temperature, at pressures of about 15 atmospheres. So the two are fed, and we said starting by superheated water, so superheated water gets into the outermost concentric pipe, goes in as shown with the arrows, goes melts the sulfur deposits. The sulfur deposits leave, as you can see there, indicated with the blue arrows just next to molten sulfur. Then at that particular time, hot, they emit hot compressed air that enters through the innermost concentric pipe uh, which comes actually to force this mixture, that is mixture of molten sulfur and water, out through the middle concentric pipe and uh, molten sulfur and water collected as shown above the ground. 
So we're saying it is possible again. We're saying it is possible to separate molten sulfur from water because of the two facts. The temperature of water is about 170 degrees Celsius. Melting point of sulfur uh, about 113 degrees Celsius. That means uh, it cannot actually turn into a solid at those temperatures. It will come out in molten form. And number two, it cannot dissolve in water, so it is insoluble. And therefore, at this point, the mixture is just cooled. The mixture is cooled, and uh, sulfur is collected and separated from water because it solidifies at a temperature of about 113. And so we are saying here. Uh, the mixture of molten sulfur and the superheated water collected are allowed to cool uh, we are seeing sulfur solidifies at a temperature of about 115 degrees Celsius and separated is then separated is then separated from water stored uh, we are seeing lastly here we can say the sulfur obtained the sulfur obtained by fresh process is about over 99% pure, over 99% pure. And that's the whole process of extraction of sulfur. And just as a brief, I'll go to the last thing today and uh, that is allotropes of sulfur the allotropes of sulfur we'll end our lesson with this that is allotropes of sulfur No. Just like carbon, just like carbon, uh, sulfur also exhibits allotropic, allotropy, allotropic tendencies. And we're seeing here sulfur, uh, just like carbon. You learnt about carbon in form two, and we're saying just like carbon, it exhibits, exhibits, exhibits allotropy, a 
lotropy. Just to remind us, we'll start by asking our question here. Uh, what is uh, what is allotropy? What is allotropy? Allotropy. What is allotropy? What is allotropy? To answer this question, we'll start by saying it is the existence. It is the existence, existence of different forms, different forms especially crystallines of an element in the same physical state. But also, we need to answer the question, what are allotropes? What are allotropes? What are allotropes? We answer the question by saying, are different forms are different forms of an element existing existing in the same physical state same physical state in the same physical state the same physical state now that gives us a clear picture of what allotrope is all about and what allotropes are all about now which are these allotropes of sulfur which are these allotropes of sulfur uh, there are mainly two crystalline allotropes and forms of sulfur, these allotropes, namely rhombic sulfur, and monoclinic sulfur. Monoclinic sulfur. These are not the only forms of sulfur. There are other forms of sulfur. That is uh, other non-crystalline. There are other non-crystalline forms. other non-crystalline forms 
namely we have plastic sulfur colloidal sulfur and number three powdered sulfur uh, I want to stop our class there today and maybe in our next class we'll discuss uh, the preparations of these allotropes of sulfur will begin with the rhombic sulfur monoclinic. Uh, then we move to plastic sulfur, colloidal sulfur, and powdered sulfur. Unless there is a question, I want to rest my case there today. And I uh, wish you the best. Take your time to read, but at the same, same time, stay safe. Corona is still there. Thank you.